Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have 1 over z plus 1 over 1 plus i equals 2 minus 3i and we're going to be solving for z. I'll be presenting probably two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method I'm going to do the following. Um, I'll replace z with a plus bi. Does that make sense? We can write z in standard form or rectangular form. And let's go ahead and plug it in. We're going to get 1 over a plus bi plus 1 over 1 plus i equals 2 minus 3i. Now at this point, you can definitely make a common denominator. That's one way to do it. That's not recommended. It's better if we get rid of the denominators such as uh, multiplying by conjugates. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply the first one by a minus bi, top and bottom, because we had the one, it's just gonna be a minus bi. And this one we're gonna multiply by one minus i, so it's gonna be one plus i times one minus i, and the numerator is one, so it's gonna be one minus i. And this should equal two minus three i. Now, when you're adding two complex numbers and when they are like kind of rational like this or reciprocals, you don't have to make a common denominator, especially when one of them is unknown. So this is going to give us the following a minus b i divided by a squared plus b squared. Remember, when you multiply two complex conjugates, you always get a sum of two squares, not difference, sum of two squares. Here, this product is going to give me two. So I can go ahead and just divide it by two and that is equal to 2 minus 3i. Now, one of the things that will be very meaningful at this point is to isolate the a minus bi stuff. So let's go ahead and subtract this from both sides. Uh, that way we'll isolate the unknowns, which is better. You don't have to do it that way, but I think it's better. So let's go ahead and subtract 1 minus i over 2. Now, at this point, you can go ahead and make a common denominator or just multiply both sides by two, even two times a squared plus b squared will make sense. But let's leave it at that for right now and make a common denominator. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply two minus three i by two to make a common denominator and we'll subtract one minus i. Notice that there's a negation here, so it's gonna change the sign. So we'll, we'll get four minus six i minus one plus i divided by 2, and then we can simplify this, a minus bi divided by a squared plus b squared equals 4 minus 1 is 3, negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, and this is what we get from here. Now, would it be safe to assume that a squared plus b squared is equal to 2, and a minus bi is equal to 3 minus 5i? As long as that works, yes, but here's the problem. If a minus bi is equal to 3 minus 5i, which indicates a is equal to 3 and b is equal to negative 5, this is not going to give you 2 when you add the squares up, right? So that's a little problematic. Uh, we could work with multiples, but that's going to be too painful. Too painful. Instead, let's go ahead and do it a little differently. How? Separate the real and imaginary parts. So. If you do it on the left-hand side, you're going to get a over a squared plus b squared. And then on the uh, imaginary part, it's going to look like this. Times i is going to be 3 halves minus 5 halves of i. Make sense? Great. Now, we can go ahead and set the real parts equal to real parts and imaginary parts equal to imaginary parts. And since there's a minus sign, I don't have to worry about it. We can negate both sides at the same time. So let's start with the first one. a over a squared plus b squared is equal to 3 halves. And the second one gives me b over a squared plus b squared is equal to 5 halves. Now, how do you solve this system? This is a system. One way to do it, which is not, again, uh, the best way to do it, is you can square each equation, add them up. That's going to give you a squared plus b squared divided by a squared plus b squared squared because you kind of have to square it, right? And that's going to give you... 9 plus 25, which is 34 over 4, and then which is 17 halves. And then this is equivalent to a squared plus b squared, and then you can plug it in. One way to do it, it's not super bad. I thought it was going to be worse, but it's okay. 
Or you can think about it this way. You can divide these, right? And when you divide, a squared plus b squared is going to cancel out, leaving you. So you kind of divide like this. And then these two are going to cancel out. And you end up with a over b. And of course, the twos are also going to cancel out. 3 over 5. Now, at this point, I think it makes sense if we assume a can be written as 3k and b can be written as 5k. Then plug it into one of these equations. Let's use the first one. If you replace a with 3k and then divide it by 9k squared plus 25, again, we're going to get the 34k squared equals 3 over 2. And then from here, we can solve for k, just cancel out one of the k's. And this gives you something interesting. Uh, I did uh, on purpose. I didn't want to make use nice numbers so that it would be easy to guess. Okay, so if you multiply these, it's going to be I think 102k is equal to six. I could probably cross cancel anyways, and then k is going to be three over 51. Wait a minute, three goes into 51, doesn't it? Yes, of course, <laughs> because it is three times 17, right? Well, I should have known that because you can directly cancel these out. Anyways, we got it. K equals one over 17. So. What do you do with that? Well, once you find k, obviously, you can go ahead and find a and b because a is 3k, which is 3 over 17, and b is 5k, which is 5 over 17. And remember, we were looking for z, and z is what? a plus bi, right? So we're going to plug it in. z is equal to a plus bi, and that is equal to 3 over 17, 3 over 17, plus 5 over 17i. Some people are going to write it as 3 plus 5i all over 17. Same thing. All right? This brings us to the end of the first method. And now let's go ahead and use the second method. Okay? So for my second method, uh, what am I going to do? I'm basically going to use the uh, original expression. But this time, instead of Instead of uh, replacing z with a plus b i, I'm going to directly solve for z, right? Be because that's easier. But why did I go with the first method? Just uh, for fun? Well, the first method sometimes uh, must be used, especially when there are z conjugate or z bar or when you have absolute value involved. You need to do that. That's why it's a general method. Anyways, so let's go ahead and try to do the following. Let's isolate 1 over z. And we're pretty much going to be doing the same thing here. Multiply by conjugates. And then from here we get 1 over z equals. Now we're going to write this as 1 minus i over 2 again and make a common denominator. That's going to give us 4 minus 6i minus 1 plus i. Again, negation. Remember that. Divide by 2. And then we can write 1 over z as 3 minus 5i over 2. Now, z is going to be the reciprocal of this because 1 over z is the reciprocal. So z is 2 over 3 minus 5i. And now we can go ahead and multiply by the conjugates one more time, which is 3 plus 5i and 3 plus 5i. When you distribute the 2, you're going to get 6 plus 10i divided by, well, I probably shouldn't uh, di distribute the 2 anyways. 9 plus 25, is that familiar? 34. And if you divide the top and the bottom by 2, you're going to get 3 plus 5i over 17, or 3 over 17 plus 5 over 17i. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.